Hello everybody, welcome to Fat Bodies. Today or tomorrow we get the web app release and the 10 hours early access for FIFA 21. We are here with Jake, our trading expert, to let us know, to teach us how to make the first coins in FIFA 21. How are you, Jake? I'm doing really well. Um, with the game changers getting in the game today, it's been brought a lot of attention and hype to FIFA 21. I think people are finally really excited. I know it's only a day before we can start doing some things with the web app and then uh, you get the EA play right after that. But I think people are finally really excited to get the game and enjoying watching their streamers play it for the first time. I really hope that the web app comes sooner than later because even for these streamers, I have caught a few today. They can't do that much because there's just simply like so little listings on the market and like players to find games. So I think it's going to be optimal to supplement with the web app really soon so just more people get on the market and more cards and more SBCs come out but I'm personally really excited I'm hoping for a huge year for uh, anyone who follows me on social media my patreon myself I just want to make the community as many coins as possible exactly exactly and maybe let's uh, let's drive our listeners or viewers guys you can listen this on so on Spotify Google and Apple podcast yep Let's, let's drive them to a little bit of schedule for this week. So uh, EA announced that on uh, 30 of September, mm -hmm. the web app will be launched. Yep. And in the next day, the companion app, if I'm right. Yep, yep. It usually and, follows the day after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, on 1st of October, uh, the people who have EA Play which was EA Access until uh, this year, mm -hmm. can play 10 hours of the game. Yep. Uh, of the game, yep. basically. And I wanted to ask you if you remember last year mm -hmm. when the web app got released, like during the, during the day, I think it was a little bit around uh, 6 p.m. Yep. UK it was, time. It was right around 6 UK. Typically, we see it from anywhere from 4 to 8 p.m. UK. Uh, which mm -hmm. is kind of ironic and it doesn't really make sense to me because they it's good because most people can be on at that time right there's a high percentage of users but it's also yeah. bad because it causes so much traffic <laughs> because everyone's spamming to get on at the same time but yep i would expect it right in that time frame tomorrow so 4 to 8 p.m i would expect it to come in and then ea play the next day and uh, so so the web app gets released a lot of people jump into the web app. We'll talk a little bit later what to do there. Uh, but I remember, uh, I remember it's similar to uh, to EA Play. Yep. Uh, it, it's like during the kind of the same hours. I, I don't know if last year, but two years ago, um, I jumped in uh, EA Access around, I don't know, evening, night. So it's not during the day, I think. Yep. Yep, I think the same. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit later in the day, so it's something to keep an eye on. And there's huge market indications, guys, when it comes to that. There's implications when it comes to that. Um, once EA Play is out, that's when people can get their FIFA points accessed. They can't do that yeah. on the web app. So the market is going to see an insane boost once people get their access right to EA Play, EX, whatever you want to call it. The market will rise heavily. I mean, meta cards you'll see will double to triple in price, and that's just simply because on web app, don't expect and don't don't plan on making a lot of coins. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Every single coin you make is really important, but if you come out of just web app, so starting September 30th, if you come out of yeah. September 30th with say 30 to 75k, which I think a lot of people might. That's amazing because if you put those coins into players and you pick the right cards, um, meta cards that are, people are really want for their team that they might use during that EA access time that they're really excited about, they can double in a day. So I mean, like whatever you make should be doubled the day after. So just keep grinding, keep remembering that every 200, 400, 500 coin profit will really add up. Uh, just uh, let's take it step by step, Jake, and yeah. I want to... Because let's say maybe a lot of uh, new people uh, are listening here or might listen here. Yep. So I want to ask you, so let's say uh, you get access to the web app. 
Uh, I remember it's very laggy in the first totally, hours. Totally. Uh, I remember also you need a, 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 a FAT account from previous FIFA to get access to the web app. I'm not sure if they are changing this that uh, this year. Yeah. So if you're like a new player of, uh, of or new user of FIFA, I'm not sure if you'll be able to access the web app. So yep. you need to have some history there. Um, you get into the web app, let's say it's very laggy. Uh, everybody remembers at the beginning of the game and also in the web app, uh, you will be able to choose the nation from which you which you'll get a starter team yep um of course we can talk now about what are the most important nations i think yeah, you may yeah. agree with me that uh, i don't know france england germany are some kind of nations or spain spain even spain yep. which have a lot of uh, good players a lot of good links and yep. it's easier for you to pick uh, these kind of players yeah, guys, for the right when the web app opens, it's going to ask you to choose your starting nation, like Florian said. And the only thing you should be thinking about at this time, it's not about who's meta. These cards that you'll get, you some people won't even use them at all. I mean, like for one game. Others others might play a handful of games with them, but that's about it. Um, yeah. These cards are, are not meta. They're bronze, silver, maybe a couple gold, uh, typically non-rare. But how we think, like traders, is... How can I pick a team that is going to help me save coins? Because we talk about every coin matters during that first day. And it's true. Like if you can save anywhere from 200 to 1,000 coins on your SBCs, you're doing well. And like Florian said, I think those big nations are the way to go. And then specifically nations that also have a lot of league. So what I, what, what I mean by that is I think of England where they have uh, the Premier League, they have the Championship, and then they have a few lower leagues as well. So that gives you a lot of options for chemistry um, mm -hmm. and, and then multiple league links, which are needed in those beginner SBCs. So England's a strong choice. Germany is another one that has multiple. So, uh, yeah, picking those that can also cross leagues is a good idea. Yeah, personally, uh, I was thinking, the, I, I, so I was checking today. Uh, today is uh, Tuesday, guys. And today some game changers uh, got their hands on uh, on the game and they were starting their uh foot club in ultimate team fifa 21 and i was checking them uh they didn't none of them like three or four which, who i watched didn't get any big name in the yep. uh, in the starter pack so don't don't hope for big names yep i don't think any of them got any rare uh, golds so only only non-rare golds uh but my personal uh, choice for uh, for tomorrow or in two days or when the weather ca comes will be French. I like yep. I liked a lot the French team uh, in FIFA 20 and I think uh, French it will be nice to to link, especially after I've seen uh, like some ratings for FIFA 21 and yep. the database and so on. And Florian mentioned something there, guys, with welcome back packs. So. Right after choosing that nation, you're also going to get welcome back packs, and they are associated with how long you've played foot for. So whether you started FIFA last year or five years ago or ten years ago, uh, I mean Ultimate Team specifically, it's going to matter, yeah. and it's going to um, essentially just determine how good of packs you get. And it's not a huge substantial difference. It's not like you're getting a mega pack <laughs> if you've played FIFA since the beginning of time, but you'll get a little extra value there, so... Um, one thing that I did know that I did want to say too, Florian, is that yeah. with a small sample size is I've seen those packs only being gold this year where it's not mixed. So you're going to see a lot of non rare golds come onto the market and you're going to see a little bit more value out of them than in previous years. And this is again, a small sample size, but, mm -hmm. um, what I've seen this for from is three or four people who are streaming it where it's exclusively gold pack. So that could be a big deal as well. You might be able to get some good deals on gold non rares that could go up in price, but it should give you a little bit more coins to start with. So, so Jake, let's say you get these packs, you open mm -hmm. the packs, you open the starter, uh, the starter and the welcome packs. Um, what do you do next? Because you, you don't have any coins, right? Yep. Maybe you have some coins, I don't know, 
if you get any coin card, uh, yep. you know, like one K coins or three K coins, or but that's very lucky to to get. Yeah. What do you do next? I think a really important thing to decide right away is the order you're going to do things in. And ironically, I actually recommend putting all the clubs, the cards in your club to start. And I'm just meaning to start. You guys won't store any everything, but I recommend putting them all in your club because you'll help figure out what you have for SBCs because that is where I recommend going pretty early once you have around 10k coins, which you might get from the packs. Um, initially, it totally depends, but once you have around 10k, I recommend doing some SBCs. And if you have some cards in your clubs with loyalty, it could be really helpful as well. So I recommend throwing most cards into your club um, once you can get a good base and then completing the SBCs using them as much as you can. Of course, if you know they're not going to fit SBCs, maybe they're too good, right? Maybe they're a meta card and they're not going to, you don't want to toss them in an SBC. Then, of course, you'd want to look at selling them, or if they're a bad nation where they're not going to get any chemistry, again, you can sell them there. But kind of distributing them between some in your club and then selling some on to get that coin boost and then going right away into the SBCs. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a very good advice. I remember last year, um, and it's, you can do it in different ways, guys. But I remember oh, yeah. last year I was selling a lot of uh, packed cards from rewards and so on. But like 50%, 60% of the of the cards who had like discard value, I was keeping them in, in my club. And yep. they helped me a lot during the SBCs, exactly. during the objectives. Yep. You remember we, we needed to have some objectives to play like with La Liga team. Uh, you need chemistry for that. There are you need to play some games with uh, with uh, players packed by yourself so you cannot buy those cards. So it's helpful also to to save some some cards. Yep. Even even if they are like very very low. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. And those cards oftentimes will go up in price too. So yeah, you kind of have to make that initial decision right away, right? Like what what is the route I'm going to take? But I always recommend getting. A small allotment of coins, typically anywhere from like 7 to 10k, and then going right into those SBCs because with so little on the market early on, they tend to be really profitable. So mm -hmm. that 10k maybe you submit in for the SBCs might turn into 30k, and then you're working with a really solid base. And now, uh, and now, Jake, I have a question. It's a, a small debate which I saw on, uh, on Twitter the other days. Uh, yeah. There are people who want to put some coins, uh, some FIFA points yep. uh, in, uh, in the game right from the start. Now we are talking from the, from the moment you have access to, sure. to the game yep. and you can add FIFA points. Uh, some say it's good to have something to start with. Some say you, it's, it's better for you to grind those coins and not to, not to pay EA any money. How's your stand on that and what do you recommend? Great question. So I think first and most importantly, I just want to say that you do not need to spend FIFA points. And I know that the culture is driven towards getting those FIFA points or almost a feeling of being behind if you don't use FIFA points, which is really scary. I even know traders who do or are tempted to put them on early on because they want a head start. But for me personally, and I played foot for a really long time since I was pretty young, the grind from zero coins up, like literally zero, is so rewarding. It's so meaningful. It's pretty fun. And yes, it is a grind and it takes time. But it's really cool when you start at zero and you get your first 20k. Like that's pretty exciting. Same thing with 20 to 50 or even your first 100k. Then once you see your first million, I mean, it's it's just a, a great feeling. Um, if you are going to send, spend FIFA points, which... I totally understand if you want to as well. I just don't think you need them. That's the big thing. I understand if you want them because time is money and money is time. I know I have some friends, I have people in Discord that make really good money and they are really busy and they don't yeah. want to commit the hours to grind up to 100k, 200k. So they'll spend a small allotment of FIFA points early on, maybe 12k, 24 I don't know exactly what it is for them, but... Yeah, If you're going to spend FIFA points, do it right away because, guys, cards 
hold so much value in these early days that they're just never going to have again. I mean, it's going to last around a month probably, but for example, I'll give you a couple for perspective. Rashford gold card went up to nearly 100k last year, okay, during this first month. And by the end of the year, he's like pretty he's an SBC card, right? So as more and more cards come in through promotions and things like that, all these players will lose value, but since we only have gold cards to start in one team of the week, everyone desires all the same cards. So just know that the cards are going to hold, hold the most value early on. I think Langley was like 50k the second day. Allen was 40k. Goretzka was 40k. These are just some off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, Dembele was 50k. And you're just not going to see that much value again. So what I always recommend doing is literally write down a number that you would spend on FIFA points or you plan to or you want to spend it right away and then don't think about it again. Uh, even if you follow me on social media, you follow Florian, he'll give some easy pointers. Like You can double to triple your initial amount pretty easily. So yeah, I just recommend doing it right away at the start if you're going to, and I highly, highly don't recommend spending them after that. Thank you for that, uh, for that, Jake. Second big question, uh, which I have. I, as you can see, I'm prepared for you with, uh, yeah. with a list of questions today. Uh, so second question, let's say you do the, the SBCs, either that, either you, I don't know, you'll get very lucky and you get, you get some meta gold, very valuable players. Uh, there is a debate here regarding if to sell them right away and get a big amount of coins and start trading with that and make more coins yep. or keep them in the hope of exactly what you said a rise in price and sell them like in in couple of weeks how how are you on uh, on that it does it depend on the cards how do you choose the cards to keep or to sell yeah this is a really tough question it's kind of loaded right because everyone has an opinion yeah. Um, there are some different approaches you can take. So I'll just kind of explain my thought process. And mm-hmm. basically, guys, the huge jump in price comes in the first day to the third or fourth day. That's where you see the most initial rise. So if you're going to make an investment, I highly recommend doing it early into EA Play or early into Web App because that's where you'll see the most growth. And I I can recommend doing that. Um so my approach, and I'm, I'm, I'm going for day one here, guys, web app, and it's extremely important because it's, it's time sensitive and it's, everything's a little bit different depending when you do it. So on the first day, guys, I'm going to make as many coins as I can through some lower budget trading, and that's what I prefer to do, honestly, on the web app. So every time I hit a certain coin amount, every time I see it on my screen, say, let's say it's 20K, I'm mm-hmm. going to invest in a card I like. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of cards that are really cheap on web app that are under 20k for my reference point last year guys i was getting gold tomato around i think i got one as low as like 2500 coins which sounds funny because he's so cheap i got Mm -hmm. him for 2500 coins to 4000 coins and i kept buying one every time i got to 20,000 coins and i think literally the next day i was selling him between 12 to 15k if not more so that tripled my investment in one day. And you're wondering whether you should keep them long term. I really wouldn't recommend that. I don't think, I think that's a small ROI compared to what you get for the first few days, just buying and selling them. But that mm-hmm. is 100% my approach with web app. Every time I hit a certain total, I invest some of that money and then I just keep trading back up to it. I liked Tomatoes price a lot last year. I remember I also shouted. Davinson, Davinson Sanchez at 10k mm-hmm. and he went to 30k Felipe Anderson I shouted out because I liked him he went from 10k to 35k plus um Akanji went from 10k to 25k plus so those are just some examples of meta cards last year I'm not saying to use those same cards Akanji lost five ratings for example but I'm saying how much they rose in that one day so that is my approach to grind and that then I just sell those cards the next day and then begin fully trading. I don't typically invest from that point. 
So uh, you specified here some of, let's say, some of the meta cards mm -hmm. you noticed right away, uh, right away during the web app or during the first days. So I remember Semedo, Davinson Sanchez being being used a lot in the first yep. months of the game. Mm -hmm. um, how? What's your advice on uh, people recognizing this kind of meta cards? Because yep. there are plenty, plenty of cards who have the stats, but not plenty of cards who raise to the hype. Yeah, that's a a great question too. So first thing you can do, and a lot of people don't even view it this way, but if you see any price predictions from traders or people you trust with pricing, use mm -hmm. that as a huge indicator, right? If someone, for here's an example. I think Joe Gomez is going to be like 80K plus, and a lot of people are like, there's no way he'll be that high. Gomez yeah. has stats really close to Varane this year, and he got a 3 plus rating bump, a plus 3. So... He's clearly the best, second best center back in the Premier League behind Van Dijk, in my opinion. And he links with the Liverpool backs. He's English. He's obviously got Liverpool hype. So I really think he's going to be like 80K. So if I saw him on web app or something for like 15 to 20, I would 100% buy that. Um, and this is just an example. But if you trust someone predicting prices, go for it. I think Lorente. Marcos Lorente, mm -hmm. who you've seen on a lot of starter teams, he's the 82 center mid from Atletico. Um, his his max price range right now is 10k. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, so that's way too low. I think that will be a 30 to 40k card, definitely within that range. So, if you get coins together quickly and you see that and can snipe one, you just tripled your coins. But price ranges are something that are a little bit iffy because you are dependent on EA to upgrade them. Uh, sometimes they can take a day. Or less or sometimes they can take a week and you just don't know but that card is obviously worth more than that and uh if not price predictions that you're keeping an eye on or just watch what people are putting in their starter team are you seeing recurring cards uh this year for example i've seen a lot of klosterman right we know that bundesliga yeah. center yeah, back yeah the german uh, center back yeah, yeah. totally strong pace there's not a ton of good center backs in that league right now um so if you see him on web app for like five to seven K, I do expect him to sit between 20 and 30. I know that's quite high. I'm kind of comparing him to Militao last year uh, yeah. for pricing. Uh, another one I think of is Diego Carlos. He got a big ratings increase. He was really, really meta last FIFA. People like him. If I see him for 10 to 15 K, I might look at buying him again on web app. You know, these are just some examples top of my head, but but basically looking for what people are hyping up through starter squads, through the meta. Um, Martial got a striker position change this year. That card's going to be like upwards of 125k in my opinion. If he's 30k on web app, you just quadrupled your coins. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, try to piece together what you think they could be. You can also look at old footbin graphs, but... If people are willing to put in that work for you and predict their prices and you trust them, go for it. And you can really learn a lot that way. So if you said, oh, their predicted price is 40K, but I see him at 5K, wow, I'm going for that. You know what I mean? Yeah, guys. And uh, this what you said, uh, Jake, about uh, starting to trust, let's say, some some, some traders or yeah. some content creators on, on uh, foot on Twitter. It's like... I, I truly recommend this. Like, go on Twitter, totally. uh, start exploring what people are saying. There are a lot comparing with with three years ago when uh, yep. I, I really started, let's say, trading and not just going to, into the game and play the game. There are like hundreds more of of fat traders. Yep. You can make yourself an opinion like mm -hmm. spend, I don't know, follow, follow a bunch of them, um, follow... 20, 30, 40 of them, see what they are saying. Uh, you'll, you'll notice who's like the real, the real deal and who's just, let's say, maybe in the back also learning and let's say maybe a little bit copying what other traders are, are doing uh, and you'll, you'll figure it out. Totally. And I, and I have to laugh because so many times people are like, oh, Jake, you only give advice to Patreons, huh? Well, in this video, guys, I'm estimating some prices for you, and you can use that knowledge, and I'm going to use that knowledge. It's the same thing I'm going to do, right? I'm going to say, I see this card at this price, but I think his price will get to 80K, and I'm looking at Joe Gomez on my screen right now. Um, 
so yeah, you have some of the similar information, and I've taken questions on Twitter. I've tried to help people. So my point is, I'll try to help you guys out the best I can, and luckily, um, those Patreons are allowing me to con- commit more time to FIFA, whether it's uh, my paid work or free work, so I can spend more time on FIFA helping you guys. And here, I did bring up a comparison of Gomez to Varane, so you're seeing... Yeah, Varane has four more defending and two more physical, but look at that. I mean, they're relatively close, and Varane, we know, can see 200k plus for sure. Yeah, guys, and uh, let, uh, let's go a little bit into the sponsored section of the, of the show. I want to tell you something. So if you, if you got yourself the, the, the money to buy, let's say, a, a Champions, an Ultimate Edition, mm-hmm. and... Uh, NDA play and uh, you have like 10 hours early access and yeah. so on and may- maybe you even think about adding some FIFA FIFA points to to your account you should you should definitely consider joining uh, the Patreon because if you do the calculations you'll see it's it's a very small amount compared to the money you spend on FIFA points let's say I don't know 12k FIFA points is 100 a uh, hundred dollars or yep. euros and uh, compared to that i'm not sure how many spots you still have available for your patreon J. I know you don't need uh, to sponsor it i'll have like 75 tomorrow but it's gonna sell out for sure but we'd love to have you and um, i'm glad people are seeing so much value in it yeah so so guys you you should think also on on this uh, on this matter if not, we are, don't worry. We are here every week with the with the FIFA 21 uh, Fat Bodies podcast. Exactly. So as you can see, until now, I think Jake answered a lot of valuable questions. Uh, it's good. I for now, it's good that we don't have a lot of like big numbers in uh, yeah. watch watching yep. watchers or listeners. But for you guys, I don't know 100, 200, 300 listeners. We are very happy to share this info with you, and uh, it's it's free info. You just need to spend some time uh, doing also your own research and uh, watching this. Exactly, and I don't want to do anything that disrupts the market. It's where, it's why people start Patreons. It's why people start exclusive exclusive services because you can't tell ten or twenty thousand people about these investments or one car or approaches. So. Um, yeah, I'm happy to share with a smaller pool, so thank you guys for listening. I am looking at Ferlin Mendy right now, guys. He was upgraded to an 83, and we already know how overpowered he was last year. Just so you guys know, for a card like Mendy, I can see him being like 90 to 100K, which sounds insane. But I think everyone knows he's going to be one of the best left backs now, and then he got a plus three, so he'll be packed even less. So that card is just scary now. <laughs> I've seen also, and just uh, an ad hoc question here, because I've seen, I think, Teo Hernandez, who has quite a little bit of similar stats with him. Uh, can you can you check it yeah, out? Yeah, pulling him up. Bit? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, tell me your your opinions about him. I know this uh, this topic about uh, the French left back will be discussed a lot, and totally. people will uh, will have questions. What do you think about uh, Teo? So I think that Mendy has better links. Like he has the Veron links, Ramos links. Uh, I think there are some better. There's Militao, of course, too, and then Diego Carlos. I haven't seen a ton of people looking to use Siri Ah uh, this year. Um, and this is a great point too, Florian. Now that you've led me to it, I think that guys, if you want to make those first day investments, we talked about. Yeah, I gave you some specific examples, but stick to these, okay? St- Stick to Premier League because it's by far the favorite league in foot over the years. I think it will be again. Yeah. S- secondly, s- go French because French players are hybrids. They work incredibly well together. They always do well. I think of uh, Varane, Dembele, Langley, Sizoko. All those guys did incredible last year. And then lastly, think Bundesliga. And I've actually ran and seen polls on this and Literally, almost all starter teams are Bundesliga or Prem. So I think that those are going to be the way to go. So think about those Bundesliga OP teams you're seeing with Klosterman, Zakaria. Um, I think Lemir, Lemir got an 82 card this year that looks really good. Um, yeah, it's just I'm pretty much let the community decide what to invest in for me. I watch what they're thinking is hype, what they want to do, and then I invest in it. I think Theo Hernandez is, like I said, a little worse than Mendy, but more importantly, he's in a worse league. But 
but I could see him hovering around 15 to 20k, no problem. Yeah, and probably you said about Bundesliga this year, Bayern winning Champions League, and also you know the a lot of hype with uh, Borussia Dortmund players uh, for Bundesliga also helps. Uh, yeah. In this matter, so yeah. that's a nice uh, tip. Bundesliga, yeah, I think it will be more hyped. Yeah, Sané than, is over uh, there. Kimmich got yeah. the CDM card. I think Mukiel exactly. is a right back now. <laughs> There's some really good options now. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I want to go go next to another question. Let's say continuing like the the schedule, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you get the web app. Let's say you. You figure it out a little bit, some coins, and on first of October you got the EA Play, EA Access, yep. and you you get ten hours, uh, ten hours during the game uh, to to go onto the console and and play the game. Mm-hmm. Um, what do we do now? What do we do on the console? What do we do in these ten hours? Good question. So, really small side note here and kind of funny. Florian probably knows this, but last year, guys, I paid for EA access i remember <laughs> and I, I i'm not kidding you guys i played two games my wife and i went to do something and i left the game on i wasn't in foot but i left the game on and it wasted all my time so i did not pretty much use any last year i mean i played two games and it was extremely disappointing um so i'm yeah. not gonna don't make that mistake like literally it is possible and just know that even if you're not in foot once the game is open it will start running so close out of it turn out your console don't do it but i just had to relay that because i did it and it's quite funny in my opinion and i was really mad at the time um but for the 10 hours i would start with five rivals games if and i don't think we know this yet it's not confirmed i've actually heard speculation on both ends yeah if this year guys you get a coin boost when you move up a rivals rank so if you went from division nine to division eight you get a certain coin total for that same with 8 yeah. to 7, 7 to 6, etc. But you only get that boost once. So there's speculation on when you enter, when you first get ranked in Rivals, you either have to play 5 games online or you can play, I think 30 games of squad battles will rank you this year too. I don't know the exact game total, but I think it's 30. Yeah. Um, depending what rank they put you in, I don't know if they're going to give you all those coins initially from like say you get in rank five you get 10 9 8 7 6 coins for progressing that far i don't know if that's going to happen at rewards time or right away but if it's right away i think you should play the five games directly because you'll get if you rank high especially you'll get put pretty you'll get put pretty high and then you'll get all those coin boosts right away which would be massive early on so that's where i would start um And then because EA Play is going to come out, and in my opinion, it's a for sure thing, it's going to come out after rewards time on Thursday, focus on squad battles, because squad battles is the first reward set we'll actually get. We'll get to play on Thursday, and then you get those rewards Sunday. And if you can get, say, one to 200k worth of rewards for squad battles, that's going to be so massive during that time. So I highly, highly recommend... Uh, securing a high rank in squad battles i would recommend doing the daily objectives and you can spread off spread out those 10 hours over a few days so you get different daily objectives too um that's my top recommendations for those 10 hours what about you florian yeah i I was thinking the same good tip here with the division rivals coin boost uh i'm not sure if you're getting that that coin boost when you rank maybe maybe you rank and after that if you if you get promoted into the next division, you get the coin. Oh, boost. that could so be. You, maybe, maybe, I don't know. We don't know. Maybe, yeah, it's not confirmed yeah, yet. We, we don't know how it is. Also, uh, guys, I mean, this is this could be very true, but we don't really know. Do we know for sure that the rewards are on Thursday? They keep the rewards for Thursday? Um. I don't know for sure. I don't think I have seen it on any streams confirmed yet, but in my opinion, they will be, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's also one point to take into consideration. Yep. But guys, squad battle is very important. Uh, it's very important because you can do two things. You can uh, start learning the game and you don't lose rank if you're playing for rank in Rivals. 
you need to practice a little bit uh, to practice a little bit the game before let's say you play more competitive yeah. and also at the beginning of the game you don't really have a team you have some bronze players maybe you have some silver ones some gold non rares so mm -hmm. in squad battles you can choose the rank and start playing with your team yeah yeah uh, you'll get also um, you'll get through season objective uh, because you'll win some games you'll get some objectives done so also check those early early objectives in fifa yep uh, some of them are doing sbcs which you can do on the web app some of them are playing the game or scoring a goal or playing mm -hmm. i don't know with a first stoner team and so on so that's very important to yep. do uh, and yep. also th this thing with uh, with logging in in different days could be also very worthy yeah, and Florian had a good point there. He just uh, briefly mentioned it, but uh, he said you can do the SBCs on the web app. And just as importantly, I think, as what you should do with those 10 hours, what you shouldn't do, guys, is like SBCs. Uh, that takes too long, right? And it's going to use up your time. And why wouldn't you do that on the web app or companion if you can? I would save those 10 hours literally exclusively for gameplay. Even uh, trading, I like to trade on console quite a bit, but I won't be doing it on console. Um, the only time I would think that would be feasible is if like you're really good at sniping with a controller for some reason, then it might yeah. be helpful. But I, I really recommend just playing the game. So even if it's like applying contracts, we all know our players are going to start with seven contracts because they're fresh cards, right? So mm -hmm. if you run out, if your whole team is out of contracts, it could take you like, especially with the menu leg, like five to 10 minutes to add them on to each specific player. So do it on companion or web app why would you waste that time yeah guys and don't uh, remember this year we have a, a new mode or option to yeah. have your fast stadium don't spend time yeah. doing that you will have a lot of time uh, while uh, you'll have the full game mm -hmm. so don't go there i i wouldn't so with ea play i would only go for ultimate team I will all, would only go to play the games, to do objectives, to get coins. This is your main objective in those 10 hours. Yep. Um, so, yeah, make sure you do that. And also big advice, big, big advice. Yep. Uh, exit uh, ultimate team. Please. And close FIFA. Don't be like when, Jake uh, last year. Yeah. That was embarrassing. Yeah. Don't do, like, don't do it like Jake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Florian, let's talk about something interesting that happened today, which I don't know if it was announced or okay. we didn't know, but a lot of pretty much all the game changers are able to play the full FIFA 21 today, and I didn't know that was going to happen at all prior, did you? Man, I didn't know, mm -hmm. but I remembered that last year... Uh, so there are, there are two sides ab about it. Yeah. There are some players who, so the game changer, which are like content creators and so on, who are chosen by EA and they get some kind of perks like yeah, this, yeah. Uh, let's say yep. early access full game. Okay. And there are people who already have copies of the game. Correct. Yep. Physical copies. And I copies. remember last year, uh, people who had copies got into the game, got a lot of trading, played a yep. lot of games, a lot of rivals, squad battles. And at some point, EA reset the their coins. I yep. don't know if you remember this I from do. last year. And uh, so now let's talk about the game changers. Okay, so the game changers got access today, which means that they got to play some games. They got to open a yep. lot of packs. I I've watched uh, DGA Mario yep. stream on on YouTube. I think he so was the first he, one. Yeah, yeah, he was the yeah. first one. He he got a lot of hype. At some point, over one one hundred k people were were oh, watching really? him. Oh, really? Wow! Yeah, yeah, on YouTube. So he was very big. After that, Castro and sure. uh, other other YouTubers got the game also. Yep. So uh, that that also implies a lot of things for for the market, I think. And I think you wanna touch that point, or you wanna touch the debate about if that's fair or not. What's the what's the question? Oh man, I think we could go over both. Um... Let's 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 go first about. How, what are the implications for the market with all these people getting their hands on, on the game, full game already? Sure. So the, the, the big thing here, guys, is that they're getting the game today, which is a Tuesday. So on today is a Tuesday, and we all know Division Rivals rewards come out on Thursday. So 
these players, the select group of players, is getting an opportunity to play rivals without much competition um, before the first rewards, where very, very few will get that. Because like I said earlier, for those with EA Play, it's going to come out after rewards, in my opinion, where you can't get any games in. I think that's simple for EA. It tends to be more in the afternoon time anyway. Uh, and yeah. Rivals rewards are out so early, it won't happen, in my opinion. So these people get Rivals rewards, and no one else does, right? And those rewards are going to be so meaningful in terms of how many coins they can get because whatever they get in coins, let's say it's 50k, Again, this is before EA Play comes out and other people can get those FIFA points on. So whatever cards they invest in, kind of like the lists of meta cards I was giving you earlier, Bundesliga, Prem, French, etc., can literally double to triple the next day because that's when a ton of users are going to get those initial coins ready on the game and ready to yeah. buy. So if those people simply get some cards that are meta, I mean, whatever they get from Rivals Rewards, whether it's 50k, or 100k can be doubled the next day, no problem if they know what they're doing. I I personally feel, I mean, it's, it's definitely an unfair advantage because of that reason. It's literally equivalent to spending an extra three to $500 on FIFA points to start, in my opinion. Um, and I just hope that if people have it, they know how to use that to the best of their advantage because you can literally get such a head start because that 500k is also going to be easy to double if you make a lot, right? So, yeah, um, yeah. I the other thing that upsets me, I guess, Florian, as a user who's played this game for 10 years and is not a game changer, um, <laughs> and yeah. the game changers they love to be spending FIFA points, that's a large majority of them, in my opinion. Uh, since I actively promote against them, I don't know if I'd ever become part of that program. The other thing that bothers me is that the game is fully ready and it's already been a longer wait for FIFA 21 this year. So it looks kind of silly when most people can't even access the game for another week when it's fully ready to go already. I don't know. I, I don't like how that looks and I don't like how that feels when they're basically stopped making content for FIFA 20. It's a pan, you know, it's a pandemic year and the game's fully ready, but we have to watch others play it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I uh, so I, I kind of have the same opinion as as you do. I try not to think too much about uh, the other people, so only focus uh, uh, at myself. So that helps me a lot. To go go past it, go over it. Yeah. Um, it's tr so so I I work in marketing. From yeah. a marketing perspective, this is a big hit. Oh, to, totally. To give the game changers yep. access. Yep, it I is. I would have done it the same. Yep. Um and. Uh, I I wrote it also on Twitter and I've seen I I've, I've seen a lot of pitch notes I've seen a lot totally. of communications yep. I've seen Corey not being in the uh, in the community management team for FIFA yep. so I think their sales uh, targets this year are even higher compared to this year when when uh, we had also the pandemic and yep. more people stayed at home and they 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 did a lot of of money so in this point, I think they did a, a big move, a, a very good move. The hype is even, I think so too. It's even bigger there. For us, well, let's say smaller, smaller accounts, not game changers. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do our our basic uh, work, the things that we we know, the things that we talked about this during the, uh, the podcast, yep. I think we will be fine. Don't worry. Big part of the game changers don't really know how to trade totally, totally so don't don't think about it being a big advantage they just even if they trade they already spammed a lot of yep. fifa points they or, or already would have, have a lot of coins because of spending money so totally yeah just don't let's not think about it and but in the in the matter of of uh, uh, them being able to trade yep. i want to mention one extra thing we would expect uh, tomorrow to get the first team of the week for FIFA totally. 21, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So if if you're watching and you have the game or you have access to the game and you kind of expect some players who did very well during the weekend uh, and they get a, FIFA, a, a team of the week uh, presence there, yep. they will be out of packs for the first week. Yep. So I think uh, they will go very high in price. That that's a tip 
totally we can, we can give you here yeah yep and this team of the week one guys looks spectacular it could be one of our best ever um i'm trying to think of the names off the top of my head vardy will be in he, yeah. had, he had three uh anzu fadi had two um man i just i'm gonna slip on the names off the top of my head but there is a lot that are going to get in i actually have been writing them up on instagram if you follow me there i wrote potential team of the week Ben Yetter had two guys in a 3-2 yeah. win. He could definitely be in. I could see EA putting him in. Uh, Atletico had a monster win of 6-1. to one. Uh, So I would expect them to get at least one in form from that game. It could be Felix. He had man of the match, which would be yeah. epic. Uh, or Suarez. Uh, Morales might get one. Valverde has a chance. He, uh, Alessandrini had multiple goals in a 3-0 win. So... This is my point. Is this is going to be a very good team of the week one as well? So it'll be really exciting for FIFA players um, and for those opening packs, whether it be with points or not, whether it's just SBCs. If you pack them, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So I I would also check that that one out, guys. If you if you get access, have access. I don't know how you do it, but mm-hmm. uh, that's also a good uh, a good tip. Uh, not sure if we have anything else to I think to that cover. covers the gist of it I think that we'll mm-hmm. leave you guys with this because we want to get this podcast out as soon as possible because we know web app yeah. starts tomorrow so hopefully you guys can give it a listen and hopefully it really helps you guys with that starting with the, with the basics and starting out and you can uh, get a good allotment of coins in the first few days yeah guys and don't forget to jump into the comment section on youtube if you have let's say maybe extra extra questions yep i know the very specific questions are very hard to answer because there are a lot of questions regarding the game regarding the access regarding uh, which players are the yep. meta this year let's call them like that yep. so don't expect us to answer any everything but let's say to give you an overview what totally of what's gonna happen this, this is this is very good thank you jake for all the all the insights and uh, you know guys next week we will be here we'll be talking about we will know a lot more totally about fifa 21 and we will have even better advice for for you completely yeah thank you guys again for watching hopefully this was helpful for you and uh thanks for florian who really Uh, started this podcast and keeping it going and we're expecting a great year for fifa 21 thanks a lot guys uh see you soon later bye bye